So I am Rick. I'm a software engineer at DataCamp. So I'm not a data engineer, so I'm going to bring a little bit of a different perspective than uh, Nils's talk. Um, um, yeah, going to show you how you can actually also use DuckDB embedded into your applications if you build applications. So before I can share all that, I have to give a first uh, quick intro to what DataCamp is, if you don't know us yet. It's not a sales pitch. Um, so if you know DataCamp, you probably know us as a data science learning provider. So people, organizations come to us to upskill their employees in data science and data engineering. And nowadays AI, of course, also. Or people that want to switch careers and learn data science. Um, yeah, that's what we are well known for. But of course, after learning data science comes doing data science. And that's why, uh, and um, yeah, as you probably know, a lot of data science is done inside these things, Jupyter notebooks. Um, yeah, I see you're all pretty familiar with it. So we decided at DataCamp in 2021 to introduce our own tool to build, uh, to, to have, to, uh, we have our own notebook tool uh, called DataCamp Workspace. And this is actually the tool that I mainly work on. So it's a modern class-based data science notebook. So it's basically like the Jupyter notebook that you all know, but then, um, yeah, something more modern. I'm um, quickly just going to show you uh, what it looks like. So this is a really super simple demo. Um, as you can see, it should look pretty familiar with cells. Um, we have this special type thing called a SQL cell, where you can directly in this case, query from Redshift. Um, and as you can see, I'm here querying some ticket sales data in one cell. And you see the result here. Um, there's some events and some prices per ticket and some quantities of tickets sold. And then in the next cell, I have some code to create a, a plotly plot, I think, um, to plot this data. I'm going to hide real quick. And then you visualize the data. Um, yeah, very super simple demo. Um, I'll make it full screen again. Okay. I can it and down. Full screen again. Oh, yeah. It's fine. So that's that again, first place, the tool I work on. And now we can go to the interesting part, which is how we use uh, LuckDB at DataCamp. We mainly use it in this workspace tool. Uh, so we have three main ways we use uh, LuckDB at DataCamp. So the first thing is a, a, um, a thing called data frame CSV SQL. I'm going to show you really quick how that looks like. I'm going to zoom in again a little bit. So here um, I'm uh, doing something uh, really uh, simple, reading a, par uh, a parquet file into a data frame, into a pandas data frame. And it's loading for some time now. I'm going to refresh real quick. <laughs> I'll probably uh, blame it on the internet anyway. Um, this reads data into a data frame. And then if you want to process data, uh, if you want to process data, you usually uh, use pandas to do that. And for example, here you uh, filter on the passenger account sort of values. But like nil shared, uh, we don't like using pandas or, or uh, um, uh, Python. What you can also do in with this tool, uh, data frame and CSV SQL. It's a special type of SQL cell where you can write SQL against this data frame directly, and you could, can do the same filtering uh, where you here select from the data frame name as if it's a table. And normally, if the internet is better, this shows you the same results. Uh, but what you can then also do is uh, query directly from the parquet files. So yeah, you don't have to first read it into a data frame. Uh, you can just say the parquet file there. So that's our first uh, tool. So why did we build this? Well, it's super useful for uh, beginner users. As you know, we are, we are, we are teaching people data science. Uh, they don't know, uh, um, yeah, they don't have a Postgres database lying around if they want to practice SQL. Um, and for us, it's also way easier to organize live events like this. If we want to teach people SQL, um, it's way easier for us to find the parquet file on, on uh, somewhere or find the CSV file. And so we can really easily, without spinning up a database, 
teach people SQL. So that's one reason. But then, so it's useful for beginner users, but it's actually also super user, uh, useful for power users. So um, if you do a lot of queries against your data warehouse and you pull in large amounts of data always into your notebook, you have to download uh, that same data again and again if you're doing similar queries. Um, it's obviously slow, um, but it's also sometimes costly. And because you, some uh, warehouses charge you for egress uh, uh, data. So in this case, it's often better to keep the data local, just download it once into a data frame, and then just keep uh, writing SQL on top of it with uh, uh, the SQL, uh, the data frame as SQL, CSV SQL feature. Oh. So now you might be a bit suspicious, uh, automatically reading CSVs, Spark F files, and data frames. It looks a bit like DuckDB, exactly. And you might also be suspicious because the, the talk is called DuckDB a data camp. Um, but that's because it is. It is uh, exactly just DuckDB uh, uh, powering this. So how did we implement this? First, I have to show you a little bit how JupyterLab works. So JupyterLab is a really traditional client-server application. Where And if, if you, for example, run JupyterLab locally, you also have that server component. But then that just runs on your own machine. And the client here uh, is, is the notebook you see. And if every time you execute some code, that goes, code just goes to a server. And the server executes uh, that code and gives you back a result. And this result can be uh, anything. If you type 1 plus 1, it gives back 2 in a string and send it, sends it back. But it can be also uh, HTML. CSS uh, and, and JavaScript to have like a very interactive result. And that's how JupyterLab uh, gives you like the very uh, interactive compute environment. So now specifically for our feature, data frame and CSV SQL, um, the code that we send from the client from the notebook to the server is the uh, SQL statement uh, with some metadata. And on the server, we just run DuckDB, uh, let it execute that query, and then we get back a table JSON. And so we get all the data back, and we can render it uh, nicely in the front end if it uh, works. And then, yeah, this is pretty much how it looks like on the server side. Uh, it's really not much more than these three lines. You import the DB. We set uh, you can specify a variable name uh, of of your data frame, and we just execute the query with the DB. It's a little bit more involved uh, when when uh, in the production code, but. It comes down to this, basically. And for me, that really highlights uh, the usability and the feature richness of DuckDB. So this is what is mentioned on the DuckDB website, if you visit it. Uh, it's really super simple. If you're already running Python to also run DuckDB, you have to set up no dependencies whatsoever. Um, and it's also super feature rich. We didn't have to do anything to make the direct Spark import work, a direct CSP import work, or make the reading from data frames uh, work. It just comes all out of the box with no installs, which is pretty awesome. So that was the first um, feature, data frame and CSV SQL. The second way we use DuckDB is for powering SQL on top of Google Sheets. So as you can see here, I have a very se uh, simple query selecting something from uh, a, a Google Sheet. And how that works is it's a little bit more complex than data frame and CSV SQL, but it's uh, Pretty simple too. So we check which sheets you are querying, um, and then we download that sheet from uh, from uh, Google Slides, uh, Google Sheets, and we also allow specifying ranges. So for example, if you say uh, a sheet name, exclamation mark, and then a range, we only get uh, a specific range from your uh, sheet. So we download that, and then we um, transform that into an arrow uh, table in memory. If you don't know Arrow, it's a columnar memory format. Um, it's language agnostic, so you can, uh, yeah, it's a bit like Parquet, Parquet is like a on disk format that different languages can read. Arrow is kind of the same for in memory. So we create that Arrow table representation in Node, and then we just register that to DuckDB. And then DuckDB handles all of the the SQL syntax and all of the all of the rest. So that means that DuckDB, yeah, the highlights here are that DuckDB plays really well with the data ecosystem. So Arrow is becoming a bit the 
de facto way to represent data frames in memory. Uh, and DuckDB can also zero copy read from that. So that's pretty nice. And then the other highlight is that DuckDB runs also on a node server. So previously I, I ran it into in Python, but it also runs perfectly on nodes. Uh, so it's super portable. And then those two features I had were uh, still using SQL, but um, this is um, yeah, a, a different kind of feature where we don't actually see uh, SQL uh, in the user uh, interface. Uh, this is not something that is live yet, but it's something that's still in the works. So uh, this is what you would have seen if the tables would have loaded uh, in the demo. So a nice table that is interactive and that you can click through uh, with your result of your, your SQL statements. And yeah, as you can see here, you can filter through it, you can sort it, um, you can paginate uh, all in the front end, in the client. And how this works now is yeah, the client sends SQL, the server executes, it gives back a table in JSON format, and then the client um, yeah, sorts and filters and paginates all in, J in, in JavaScript. So there are two main problems with this approach that we have now. Um, one is uh, the, the JSON. So JSON is a pretty bad format for uh, representing tables or anything in general, actually. Uh, it's super space inefficient, and you have to still transform that into something else to uh, do analysis uh, on top of it. So a better way to uh, send that it would be in parquet format. So in parquet, it's columnar. Uh, so your uh, similar values are close together, so it compresses really well. And yeah, then also it's, it, it, um, it supports reading only a part of it so that you don't have to process all of it at the same time. Um, so that's one improvement we can make. But then, yeah, if you still have to process that parquet in JavaScript, I have to find a, par a parquet library and all the, handle all those details myself. So you can already see where I'm going with this. What we can instead then also do is just run DuckDB inside the browser on the client to process that parquet. And because DuckDB just supports parquet out of the box, there's nothing we really need to do except for translates the user's actions like sorting into some SQL, but that's uh, pretty simple. Yeah, and then you might be wondering, uh, downloading a lot of parquet data every time you execute a SQL uh, statement. Um, yeah, you don't want if your uh, um, SQL statement uh, returns 10 or 100 or gigabytes uh, of, of, uh, of data. You don't want us to uh, download all of that every time. This, this works pretty well for smallish uh, tables. Uh, and then it's super nice and it's really interactive. The sorting is super fast because it's all locally on your client. Of course, for larger results like a gigabyte, you wouldn't want us to download it all. What we can then do instead is run DuckDB on the server uh, and then do the specific operations uh, on the server and send those from the client. But then the nice thing is that uh, this code is exactly the same. So because yeah, DuckDB then runs on the server instead, we have to write the same code only once for the client and for the server. And the question is, does DuckDB actually also run inside a browser because it's C++? And these days, uh, the answer is yes, because of WebAssembly. Um, if you don't know WebAssembly, it's uh, a safe, fast, portable binary instruction format. So it's a compilation target of C++ and Rust and other languages uh, that can compile into it. And yeah, normally you wouldn't write, uh, run bytecodes uh, that you download for something uh, in your browser directly. But with Wasm, that becomes possible. Uh, it's then yeah, it's safe. It doesn't. It can't access like it can't run arbitrary code on your machine then. Um, but it's still fast. And there's this package called DuckDB Wasm uh, that uh, yeah uh, makes it possible to run DuckDB inside your browser. And so that's also um, it's also super easy to run DuckDB Wasm inside of a, inside of a web worker. So that if the processing is a little bit slower. Uh, the, the, the page stays interactive. So we use DuckDB from Python, from Node, and within the browser. So yeah, this really speaks to the portability of uh, DuckDB. So yeah, that's the takeaways of this section. Uh, DuckDB is really everything it promises to be. It's super easy to use. Uh, it's fast and it's feature rich. You don't need to 
uh, set up anything to 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 uh, read parquet files or to read CSV files. And yeah, we also found that it's really super fast. It's uh, the data frame and CSV SQL feature. It's way faster than uh, running pandas codes, of course. And then the other takeaway is that you can also use DuckDB as an application developer. So for normal uh, applications that are a bit simpler uh, and don't deal with a lot of data, of course you want to uh, use DuckDB. But when you're dealing with uh, like larger 10 megabytes, let's say, amounts of tabular data, you can consider using DuckDB um, inside your application because the, the barrier to entry is super low. And then there's a third section, our integration with uh, MotherDuck. So I'm happy to share that pretty recently, a few weeks ago, we have uh, built our own native integration with MotherDuck into Workspace. And that looks a bit like this. So instead of having to uh, use Python to query MotherDuck from, from our notebook, you can directly write the SQL uh, inside the SQL cells with nice SQL lights, syntax highlighting. And for example, here, I don't know if you see this. Yeah, I'm uh, making this query available as a table here, and then querying in from it directly here. And that's yeah enables some powerful workflows where you can have the DB, um, where you can, you can have uh, other deck for processing your SQL, and then so also still use Python for those uh, edge cases. And that's it for me. Thank you for your uh, attention. <laughs>